Good afternoon, Internet. I am Matt Buyak, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at the 48th problem from the Project Euler Problem Archive. Now, this problem asks us to consider this sum here. 1 to the first plus 2 squared plus 3 cubed all the way up to 1,000 to the 1,000th. And it wants us to find the last 10 digits of that number. Now, uh, it might seem at first that we need to actually compute this enormous number. Um, we do have a big integer class that we wrote a little while back, so we could actually compute this value. Uh, but there's a, a more clever approach that will allow us to avoid needing to use big integers. And that's to use the technique of modular arithmetic. Um, this is a, a particular kind of arithmetic that uh, the idea is that you pick some divisor, call it D, and uh, after every operation, uh, addition, multiplication, or subtraction, uh, you divide by D and take the remainder. And it turns out this gives you a consistent kind of arithmetic where the usual rules all, uh, all still apply. The context in which this might make the most sense is if you consider a clock with the numbers uh, 1 through 12 on it. But for our purposes, let's pretend that the 12 is a 0 instead. Uh, 0 through 11 because those are the remainders that we can get when dividing by 12. And so uh, as an example, if you take uh, 10 o'clock and you uh, have five hours passed, then it's going to be 3 o'clock, um, at least if you're working in a 12-hour time system. Uh, and that's because if you take 10 plus 5, and then you divide by 12 and take the remainder, you get 3. So how does this help us with our problem? Well, if you uh, uh, are trying to find the last 10 digits of this number, that's the same as dividing by 10 billion and taking the remainder. And so uh, we will use modular arithmetic with uh, 10 billion as our divisor. Um, the idea is we're just going to build up our sum one term at a time uh, and build up each term by repeatedly multiplying um, and at each step uh, taking the remainder mod 10 billion. So let's get to writing some code. As usual, we will copy our template directory to make our problem directory enter our problem directory, and open our main.cpp. All right, we're going to need a couple of uh, indices here for our loops. We'll call them i and j. And uh, i is going to be uh, the number of the term that we're on. So that's going to go from 1 uh, up to and including 1,000, uh, one at a time. We'll need to keep track of our running total. So let's say 64t solution is equal to 0. Um, we'll also need to keep track of the term that we're currently building up. So let's say 64t term is equal to 1. Um, you'll note that we initialize term to 1 uh, because we're repeatedly multiplying to create term while we're repeatedly adding to calculate solution. And so we initialize that to 0 instead of 1. OK. Uh, let's actually um, take the opportunity to declare a constant. We'll say const int 64t uh, 10 bill is going to be 10, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, billion unsigned long, long. This postfix just uh, declares that this constant is intended to be a, uh, or this literal is intended to be a long, long. OK, so now we'll iterate uh, for uh, j equals 0, j less than i, plus plus j. 
Um, you'll note that the, the bounds for j are uh, starting at zero and less than i because we don't actually care about the value of j. We just want to make sure that we do this loop uh, i times. And so uh, iterating from j equals zero to j less than i will accomplish that for us. OK, so we'll say uh, term is going to be equal to uh, term times i. Remember, i is the number of the current term that we're on. And the current term, uh, we're repeatedly multiplying the number of that term. So in the third term here, we're multiplying by 3 repeatedly. So we want to multiply by i repeatedly. And then we'll say mod 10 bill. OK, after we have calculated uh, our current term in modular arithmetic, then we need to add that to our running total. So we'll say solution is equal to solution plus term mod 10 bill. And then we'll say printf solution is equal to uh, long decimal uh, solution. And we will make, and we will run, and we have a candidate solution. So let's go back to the archive here and go to problem number 48. And we'll see that we do, in fact, have a solution. As always, thank you for watching. Tomorrow, we'll tackle problem number 49.